Hello, good morning. I hope that you're all well and that you've had a good two weeks. I'm sorry there was no proper floss tube last weekend. I fully intended to um, record a floss tube on Sunday morning, but things went a little bit um, pear-shaped. Um, last Sunday, we had a special function to attend at the golf club uh, from lunchtime through the afternoon. So I thought, right, plan of action. Get up early, get the dogs out, get back, shower, floss tube, and then my wifely duties at the golf club. So anyway, I woke up way before the alarm went off and it was a beautiful morning. So off Hugo and Bertie Boo and I went and it was such a beautiful morning that I thought, well, let's walk a little bit further, a little bit further. And then we came to a spot where there's this bench and the view from that bench is so beautiful. So we did sit there and look and just enjoy a little bit of sunshine on, on my face and the dogs enjoyed the sunshine as well. We still had plenty of time to do the floss tube. And then when we were walking back, when we got to the cove next to ours, there was a gathering of Bertie Boo and Hugo's friends. So they were so excited when they saw uh, their group of friends. So they played and played and played and time was ticking on, but I just couldn't sort of not let them play with their friends. So anyway, we rushed back, <laughs> still just had enough of time to do everything. And um, I had the shower running, ready to get in and my phone went. And of course, that's the one thing you shouldn't do is answer the phone. Well, I answered the phone and half an hour later, I was still on the phone. So um, it was a real rush to um, make the lunchtime event. So I'm so sorry there wasn't a floss tube. What we did do though, on Saturday, we released um, the places for Mrs. Parkman's Needle Academy in Swindon in 2025. And um, I just want to thank everybody who signed up for it. The event sold out um, in four hours. Now, if you wanted to attend that event and you weren't lucky enough to get a place, there is a strong possibility that if you go on the cancellation list, that a place will become available. Because this is booked out, um, what is it, 18 months ahead, the event is in October of 2025, life happens, there will be cancellations. We learned that from the Great British Sample Weekend in 2023. A lot of people on the cancellation list got places. So if you want to attend, you didn't get a place, what you need to do is email, not hats, don't message me, you need to email mrsparkmans.aofn at gmail.com. AOFN stands for Academy of Needlework. It's going to be a fun event. There's going to be a wonderful shopping day for needleworkers as well as a pre-event. So, um, you know, fingers crossed, you get a place. Um, okay, so um, lots of things have happened. I can't remember back two weeks ago. <laughs> I've been so busy. Um, okay, so um, some catch up news. The Stitch Along for A Stitch in Time Saves Nine, uh, being run by Carolyn of A Stitch in Time in Tasmania. The, face, uh, the Stitch Along is being run on a Facebook group, starts on April the 1st tomorrow. So um, there's still plenty of time if you haven't secured a copy of A Stitch in Time uh, from Carolyn. Um, it's a fabulous, fabulous sampler. It's so pretty. A lot of people have actually already stitched the sampler, but the official stitch along starts tomorrow, April 1st. Um, okay, so April 1st. Tonight at midnight, March the 31st, um, the discount voucher that was in Words of Wisdom 
expires. So if you want to use your voucher, it's no good on April the 1st. Today is the last day that you get to use that voucher. 20% is a very big discount and a lot of people have enjoyed using their voucher. So if you bought Words of Wisdom, there is a voucher in your box uh, that will give you a 20% saving of Hands Across the Sea samplers, charts and fabric. Talking about fabric, um, there's been a wonderful response to the uh, panels, the little oh, blocks, I should say. These are panels with 10 blocks. They come in two sizes. Um, this is the smaller one. So the individual blocks are 3.5 inches wide by 4.2 inches tall. They all come with little sayings. And they are very, very pretty. A needleworker this week um, sent me a photograph of a range of project bags and pouches that she had inserted these little blocks into the front of. And um, I also received a video uh, from Kathy of a quilt that she had made where she had appliqued the largest size uh, blocks onto. These blocks are five by six. You can use these for project bags as well. Um, okay, so um, there's been a huge run on these blocks and they've been reprinted many, many times. I had a fresh supply arrive um, on Thursday that are all cut up, ready to ship. So they are available on my website. Um, okay. Talking of my website, um, Hands Across the Sea Samplers has made a decision that we are going to start selling linen in our online store. Now, it's not going to be that we have a huge continuous supply of linen. When we get a supply, um, they will be posted on our website and I will uh, talk about it in a floss tube and show the linen. I think it's really nice that you actually see the pieces of linen that will be on the website available for you to purchase. Now, I was talking about this to um, a friend and about sizes of linen, because these will be all over dyed linens from a variety of over dyers. And I was saying to her, um, you know, is a full yard too much, half a yard, quarter of a yard, um, an eighth of a yard, you know, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say it that way, I should say a fat half, fat quarter. Um, and she said to me, why don't you sell fat thirds? And I actually thought that was a very good point. How many times as a needle worker has a fat quarter not been quite wide enough and then you've got to go and get a uh, fat half which is too wide um, and you waste um, quite a bit of it. Um, so if you think about it, um, this is a whole yard of linen. Now this is ideal for me because we use so much linen. Um, but it's too much for a lot of people. So that's the width of a fat half. That's the width of a fat quarter. And as you can see, you know, by the time you've got your uh, margins, it does restrict it down quite a bit. So if we did a fat third, Let's work this out. This might take a little bit of jiggling. That gives you a much better width um, to work a sampler on. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I always like to do what's best for a needle worker or look at things from a needle worker's point of view, because after all, I'm a needle worker, first and foremost. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see linen available in fat thirds 
or would you prefer fat halves, fat quarters, fat eighths? Let me know. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Um, something very interesting came, um, I can't remember, it was this week or last week now, um, and it was a new sampler. And um, there were a lot of things that caught my eye about this sampler. As you know, um, we've uh, released our first uh, darning sampler, M. Nenquin, which is the first of a series of darning samplers. M. Nenquin is uh, one that I consider very straightforward to actually stitch the darning panels. But we're going to be releasing a series of darning patterns that get harder and harder and more skill is learned. And this one really caught my eye. Like I already have the samplers for the series, but I couldn't resist getting this one as well. So these are uh, the darning panels. And um, these panels have, oh, have little loops at the end. This sampler, the darning panels have been worked back to front. So the actual panels, the finished front panels, look like that. Isn't that beautiful? Really, really pretty. Let me put the board behind it because you can see it so much better. Really beautiful, beautiful work. Now, the reason that they were, the panels were worked with the back of them on the front of the sampler was that they were demonstrating how you did it and the needlework teacher could inspect the work without turning it over. Now, the reason that these loops are left when you darn is that fabric, um, it moves. You know, a lot of this darning would have been on clothing and linens and fabric is constantly moving when it's in use. And those loops helped give the darning patch, I can never say this word, it made them um, elasticity. I can never say it. Ray always laughs at me with that. Um, anyway, I thought that was extremely interesting. But the other thing that caught my eye about this sampler, and this is what makes this sampler not unique, but relatively unique, you don't see this very often, is that the sampler was worked to standard seven. Now you often see samplers work to standard four, five, and six, occasionally six, but it's not often you see a sampler work to standard seven. Now, with the standards in British schools, you didn't move up a standard each year. You moved up a standard by being able to pass the previous standard. You couldn't move up from standard four to standard five until you mastered and you passed the the, the standard that you were on. If you didn't, you just went back through the syllabus again. Now, the fact that this child completed standard seven told me two things. One, she was a bright girl um, and it wouldn't just have been the standard in needlework, the standard would have been reading, writing and arithmetic as well. So she was bright and also that she probably stayed in school a little bit longer than the average child. And yes, when um, you um, look at the sampler, it says that she was 14 years old. A lot of children would have left at 10 or 12 years of age, but she stayed in school until she was 14. Um, I just, there's just so much to love about this sampler. Anyway, it got better and better, didn't it Bertie? It got better and better. You were with mummy when I was doing my research. Um, Alice Josie, um, she became a lady's maid and because she was a bright girl, she had a good education for a working class girl and she was gifted with her needle, she didn't become 
just a domestic servant where she was cleaning and skivvying, she became a lady's maid. And she was lady's maid to uh, the de Ramsey family, Lord de Ramsey's family in Norfolk. And um, she was lady's maid to the daughters. And the, da the, the surname of, de of the de Ramsey baronet see, is Fellows. Um, and um, if you look at the census returns, you can see that Lady de Ramsey had a lady's maid, a mature lady's maid, but there was Alice as a young girl, a lady's maid to the um, daughters of the household. And the de Ramsey family is very, very interesting. The mother um, was a Spencer Churchill. She was a daughter of um, the, Mal the Dukes of Marlborough. And uh, that is the Churchill Spencer family. She was actually a cousin to Winston, oh, the, the girls were cousins to Winston Churchill. So it's a really, really interesting um, family. And um, it sounds a little bit sort of Downton Abbey. Uh, Josie, uh, Alice Josie, uh, she married and she settled in um, Norfolk, um, in Ramsey and you know, there's a wonderful backstory to explore there. So this sampler sort of hits or ticks so many boxes with me. I'm looking forward to reproducing that sampler in time and making it available for you to enjoy too. Um, I thought today it would be nice to look at a sampler from the past. And um, I'm not sure if this was the second sampler that I released for hats that I stitched. We released Mary Ann Bournes as the first and then we released Susanna Mill as the second which Sandra did and I got a funny feeling that this one was the second one that we released that I had done and that is Hannah Coates. Isn't that a pretty sampler? It's a happy sampler uh, the little girl has put a lot of work into this sampler. Um, and what I think I love the most is the oversized birds. And when you study children's art, so often everything is out of proportion. And that is the case there. I love that. And I love the little girl waving her flag with the feathers in her hair. Such a pretty, pretty sampler. So that's the blast from the past. Hannah Coates, um, she was uh, 15 when she stitched that sampler. Oops, let's get this on. This is a little bit heavy for the easel that I pulled for it to stand on. Um, okay, so um, the week ahead, on Wednesday I go to London, it's a friend's birthday and we're going to um, have dinner in London with some other friends. And then um, Thursday I've got a run round day in London, um, various appointments. And then Friday um, is the uh, start of the Cross Stitch Guilds uh, retreat at Swindon which I'm really looking forward to attending. I'm looking forward to spending time with a group of friends. Um, there's nothing like sitting around a table at a workshop or a retreat um, with your stitching friends, talking, stitching, the time goes so quickly. Um, and I will be giving a presentation at that weekend. Um, got a super sampler to talk about. Um, and um, later on this summer, I will be uh, releasing that particular talk as a uh, free lecture for everybody to enjoy on this channel. Um, okay, um, there was something else I've got to talk about, but I forgot to get the information. I'll be back in a second. I'm sorry about that. I needed to have this uh, so that the dates were in front of me because I didn't want to give out incorrect information. Um, if you go to a Stitching Times um, Facebook page, you'll see that they have announced 
details of Mrs Parkman's Academy of Needlework retreat in Hobart, Australia. The retreat will be held on, the, on May the 16th to 18th, 2025, and registration will open at 12 p.m. on the 9th of April. And in the post, Karen has says that 12 p.m. AES time and registration will be on the website. Um, the weekend is going to be action packed. I'll be giving a series of lectures and present a workshop um, on a very, very pretty sampler. Um, we've got great plans. There's going to be some uh, little twists and turns, some quirky little things in that weekend uh, in Nicholas style. Um, so I'm very much hoping that Australian and New Zealand uh, needle workers will join me for that weekend. Um, I know that a few people have mentioned to me that they were interested in flying in from other countries as well. Um, it's so nice to be going to Australia. Um, Hats has a lot of devoted uh, customers that you know religiously stitch our charts and it's going to be so nice to meet them in person it's lovely interacting with people on social media but there's nothing like meeting in person i'm very very excited about that um originally i had planned to do a workshop at the beginning of 2023 uh, in australia but covid um, scuppered our plans um, Ray and I were going to have a once in a lifetime holiday uh, that took in Australia and that's when I had planned to do a workshop but Ray doesn't travel anymore so it's just me um, I can't wait very very excited and May of next year will be here very very quickly um, okay um, I better go and walk those boys and um, yeah Life's so full and busy, it's a job sometimes to fit everything in. Um, I'm hoping that next weekend I'm going to have something a little special um, for you to watch. Um, it depends if my plans uh, all come together. Um, so if there isn't a floss tube next weekend, I apologise. It's because I'm at the Cross Stitch Guild. But if all goes to plan, there will be something else special for you to watch and enjoy and hopefully learn from as well. Um, until the next time, stay well, stay safe. Bye-bye.